Today, we're doing a special feature on the top 10 West Indian captains of all time, where we celebrate the leaders who have not only captained West Indies cricket team, but have also left huge impact on West Indies cricket from breaking racial barriers, setting new standards of excellence, fostering unity and instilling a fierce sense of competitiveness. These captains have been pivotal in shaping the legacy of West Indies cricket. Mark, welcome on the show again, brother. How are you doing? Are you ready for this episode that we're about to get into? Thanks, Nabil, for having me back on the reverse school. Raring to go to look back at the history of West Indies cricket captaincy, which is an important feature in the history of West Indies cricket. We've done a lot of studying and research work, Mark and I, to come up with this top 10 list. And just to let you guys know that it's based on the impact these players have had on West Indian cricket history, the way it actually shaped. Mark, do you want to get right into this video and let the viewers know, man, what pick number 10 is. number 10 dennis atkinson captain west indies from 1954 to 1956 all wrong player he captained trinidad and tobago and he played for barbados as well as a batsman he scored 922 runs 47 wickets he held his own as a captain as well and you know back in those days sorry to say a white man was a captain of west indies team he was the man at the helm of west indies leadership during the 50s that's how i come up with dennis atkinson not a bad track record as a captain. Three wins, three loss, and one draw. Pretty even there. He showcased his inspiration ability. Like he was, he, he did inspire players back in the day. Besides him being like one of the first leaders, like anything about the player, Dennis Atkinson, that you want to add here, Mark? You know, he was a capable batsman. Did his best during those days, you know, and they, they played on uncovered pitches, right? And back in those days, the weather had a lot to do with it too. Like in England, most of the test matches was basically against England, West Indies. We played, we played Australia as well. When when they played in England, conditions came into play a lot. That's our number 10, guys. Guys will be surprised. You know, know our number seven. There's a twist in there. So hint there, guys, for number seven. Mark, number nine, man. We're going to move on to 10 is Dennis Atkinson on our list. So you want to let the viewers know our number nine. Yeah, John Goddard. He was a captain before Dennis Atkinson. From Barbados, uh, captain 22 matches for the West Indies. Won eight matches, lost seven. That was not a bad track record there. Yeah, and I think seven draw. He scored 859 runs as a batsman and he took 33 wickets. Yeah, John Goddard is known for his calm demeanor and a strategic foresight during 1940s. You know, his captaincy is noted for instilling discipline and unity in the team, leading them to significant victories that help elevate the West Indies status in international cricket. Mark, anything else on John Goddard you want to add here? You know, back in the day, you had to have a good statue in West Indies, a social statue to be the captain of West Indies. So that yeah. alone tells you how it was back in those days. Let's move on to number eight then, Mark. Who's number eight, man? Yeah, I'm just going to go with George Headley as number eight. You know, he only captained one match and the, that was really a historical impact in West Indies cricket. Back then, captain of West Indies team was always a white man. He only captained one match and back then, what they used to do, the captain would be, they would have, would have captain for every match, different captains for every match. He captained one match in 1947-48. You know, known as a black bad man as, we, as most people would know. That's the really impact in West Indies cricket. Back then they were saying black was not worthy of leadership, political or social or otherwise. For a black man from Jamaica to be captain of the West Indies in 1948 was a big step in West Indies cricket. So that's one of one of the main reasons why I have him in the list. History speaks for itself. You can't really erase history. He was one of the best batsmen back in the day. It's a little bit different now living in society and playing cricket. You could say a breakthrough captain for West Indies. So that's why I have him in my list as number eight. Big historic moment to captain as the first black man to captain West Indies in a test match breaking the color barrier in a sport that was at a time prominently led by as you as you said white players and officials this, the, the significant milestone occurred during the West Indies tour of England in 1948 a time when racial prejudice was prevalent in cricket and society again as you mentioned Mark yeah I would just like to mention as well because he was appointed captain for that match in 1948 but the first black man to really captain West Indies was really Larry Constantine, 1934-35. The appointed captain was Jackie Grant and he was injured and he was off the field the entire day. Larry Constantine led the West Indies team at Sabina Park the entire day while Jackie Grant, the appointed captain, was off the field. That's a little bit history there. Larry Constantine was first, but George Headley was the first appointed captain. 
Wow, what an interesting insight there, Mark, because most people wouldn't know that fact that Larry Constantine you know, was the first stand-in captain for West Indian cricket, technically to actually lead West Indies cricket on the field in 1935, I believe you mentioned. So, yeah. you know, e- even though the appointment is George Headley, and that's the reason why he comes in as our number eight, but somewhere along the lines, Larry Constantine was kind of lost to, to the history books. Yes, as we know, Larry Constantine, the great all-rounder from Trinidad and Tobago, the first professional cricketer from the West Indies ever played in English, England County Circuit back in the day. One of the first, but one of the first set of cricketers who was a professional from the West Indies in English County Championship. Not to mention it, if you look it up in different places, I'm not going to tell you that. Oh, exactly. Absolutely. That's a big, big insight there, guys. That's why we wanted to kind of align it with George Headley here. Mark, thank you for that insight, man. And let's move on to number seven. Again, number seven, this was uh, a pick that comes again with a little bit of a twist. Once Mark and I started looking at the history of you know how we wanted to align this list and base it on the impact of these players right not necessarily how many games they've played how many ones or losses it was mostly the impact and the direction of west indian cricket that these guys took you know number seven mark who's our number seven that we're going with then we're going to let the viewers know twist yes um maurice fernandez 1930 he kept in west indies in one match that was the first match west indies ever won in test cricket so i mean he's one of the great pioneers give jack his jacket yeah. you know, History is history. It's there. We can't really erase it. We just have to acknowledge it. He didn't do much in the test match, but he was the captain. He was a wicket keeper as well. Normally, back in the day, which colony the match was playing, the captain would come from there. So he was from British Guyana. The match was in British Guyana, as it was no- known in those days. So he was a captain for that match. But the original captain appointed, Carl Nunes, a left-handed batsman wicket keeper. He was the first ever West Indies captain appointed, 1928. That's how we, we really try to put both men in the number seven position because Nunes was the official captain, but when they played in Guyana, Maurice Fernandez was the captain. He was of Portuguese descent, very instrumental, you know, go down in the history of the first captain to win a test match for West Indies back in 1930. And in that match, George Headley made the, the double. He made 114 and 112 centuries in both innings in that test match. Another batsman from Trinidad, Clifford Roach, scored a magnificent 209. So that just, just a little um, stats from that match. Carl Nunez was the actual appointed captain, but the first test victory came under Maurice Fernandez, yes. right? And that was that was in Guyana. We had to mention both of these guys at number seven. Fernandez, yes, for his first test victory for West Indies. The appointed captain was Carl Nunez in the historic inaugural series that West Indian team played. And as Mark mentioned, the big fact captain used to be from where the match was being played so depending on the island captain would be from that island well you have to remember too right back in those days the transportation it was by boat former yeah. transportation was by boat ship cargo ship or whatever ship banana boat or whatever back in those days the, the teams would go from the island by boat back then you only played test matches in jamaica guyana trinidad and barbados the, the smaller islands wasn't really involved until frank warrior got involved for many different reasons so that's a, that's a little insight there. This was our number seven, guys. And, you know, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. Let us know what you think so far. Number two and number one will also surprise you guys. It's the, the list, how we prepared it, right? It's, it's again, based on impact. And I want to reiterate that to you guys, just so you guys see our viewpoint of where we're going with this list. The, the fans or the audience might come up and say, oh, why you don't have Chris Gale or Lara? Well, Chris, Gale only, yeah. Chris Gale only won one match as West's captain. Lara never really won too many matches as West Indies captain. More Lara than the wins, right? My number six on the list, I have Jackie Grant from 1930-31 to 1934-35. He was a Trinidadian. He captained West Indies to the first Test Series victory versus England. He played, he captained 12 matches, won three matches, seven loss and two draw. But again, impact he made. That was the first Test Series West Indies won against England. So that was a great impact. Had to have him on the top 10 list. He was a, a teacher after we, he, he finished playing cricket night. 1935, he, he went to teach in, in Rhodesia, which was Zimbabwe, later known as Zimbabwe, and Grenada in the Caribbean. Just a little background on Jackie Grant, educator, smart man, uh, a smart West Indies captain as well. Number yeah, five. he was known for his, you know, strategic acumen, innovative captaincy, contributed significantly to the development of West Indies cricket during its formative year. He comes in at number six, Jackie Grant. Let us know what you guys think in the comments. If you guys have any other details any oh, about any of these players we're discussing, feel free to drop them in the comments. Yeah, I would love 
love to engage with all of you guys. Number five, Mark. Who are we going with? We're getting into the top five. Yes, I'm going with Gary Sobers. So Gary Sobers, Captain West Indies from 1964 to 1972. A good leader. He performed well as the leader of West Indies team, both with the bat and the ball and on the field and his strategies as well. He was known as a gambler, really, because he had some controversial decisions when he declared. One match in particular, he declared and England came back and won. He got some stick for that. But he was a, a, a guy always opening up the matches to try and get a victory. He kept in 39 test matches, won nine, lost 10, and drew 20. So it wasn't too bad as a captain. And that great personality, nice leadership qualities on and off the field, a gentleman back in the day, you know, one of the greatest all-rounder, greatest cricket of all times, Sir Gary Sobers, one of my favorites. Yeah, man. And he was dynamic, you know, as you said, in his leadership and exceptional with his personal performance as well while he captained. He never let that standard dip below or let the pressure of captaincy burden his performances because when he became captain his performances only got better and better and better so he was one of those players who led from the front and may have been a bit controversial but he was always trying to move the game forward and get, get the win for the West Indies so that's what makes him again one of the all-time greats probably the best player to be ever known in the cricket right the greatest ever cricketer some people may say Riv Richard some people say other names but I think Gary Sobers is in that conversation as the top dog so that's why like all around ability his captaincy his strategic thinking and the ability to just take risk and do what he wanted to really do and, and command respect so number six sir gary sobers mark you want to add anything else about sir gary sobers here most of the cricketers should really know history of west indies cricket if you're a good cricketer you should really know all the stats and info about sir gary sobers you know they should really in, in the school put in the curriculum you know one of the really legends of west indies cricket it's a great idea i think like in early schools there should be history books on cricket teaching this history you know so it's never lost because again the history is is why we want to do this is so we can keep it alive where we can provide some value and information to the viewers about these past players and give you guys some more insights you guys can find information on brian lara and chris gale and, and all the players from today right but these players that we're talking about be harder for you to guys to find information on so number four we're getting into the top four guys you know let us know what you guys think and again number two and number one will well, i think surprise you guys number four mark who are we going with man richie richardson he captain west indies from 1992 to 1995 a flamboyant batsman as we all know a very good batsman against pace bowling known for his maroon floppy hat a good captain and those days West Indies still had a formidable team. So leadership, leading for him wasn't too hard because we, we had very good players still that was performing. You know, he led from the front, a good captain, on and off the field. What more can I add to, to Richie Richardson? Strategically wise, he was very good. He believed in his players, stand up for his players in any controversy or anything like that. But most of all, he led from the front. 24 matches as captain. He won 11 matches, lost six matches and draw seven. So a for, not, not a bad record, formidable rec record by Richie Richardson. Yeah, the record is not bad i mean the main thing was that he took over in a in a period of transition right when west indian cricket was going from the greatness of the 70s and the 80s and to the early 90s where they had to switch to a different newer modern way of playing cricket you know the aggressive style was always there but the, there was adaptations in, in the game and different rule changes and umpiring standards and a lot of things were taking place at that time within the icc and but richie richardson took over in a transitional period it was aggressive and positive and maintain West Indian cricket balance at that time. And that's why he's there because he was one of those guys who captained an early period of transition in the 90s. He had a good team as well. I mean, he had Ambrose, Walsh, and great players around him. Laura, Simmons, Benjamins, Junior Murray, you know, to God. So he had, he had good cricketers with him and he led from the front. Cool, man. Richie Richardson, number four. Now we're getting into our top three, guys. Going to be some exciting picks here. So number three, Mark, the viewers know, man. Number three is Sir Vivian Richards. Captain West Indies from 1988 to 1991. Captain 50 matches, 127, lost eight and draw 15. Never lost a series as a captain. He was always aggressive. Always put West Indies first as a captain. For, for Viv Richards, it was like a war. Once he got on the field, all the joking around, everything stopped. It was more very important to him to win matches and, and especially against the, the great enemy, Australia or England. You know, he, And as a batsman, he performed well as well. Led from the front would always come in. If West Indies the bat position, he would come up and produce a match-winning knock or a match-saving knock. What more can I say about 
Viv Richards. Class batsman, class leadership, strong personality, and no nonsense man. He was unmatched, right? In, in the level of swagger and the confidence he brought from 1984 to 1991, his tenure. He's remembered for era dominance. West Indian cricket dominated that era where, you know, his fearless approach, innovative tactics kept the West Indies cricket on top during that period. It was for him when he took over from Clive Lloyd, I believe, right? He took over the leadership. Yes. He had to keep keep that legacy going and he did. And I believe any captain that came after that, either, you know, they didn't have the team as good as the 80s or 70s or they weren't as good leaders as Clive Lloyd or Viv Richards. Number three, Viv Richards, one of the greats of the game. Game. So number two, Mark. And again, guys, I hope you guys yeah. are ready for this one. Number two, who are we going with? Uh, we're going to go with Sir Clive Lloyd. Captain Lloyd. West Indies from 1975 to 1985. 74 matches, 36 wins, 12 loss, 26 draw. Clive Lloyd was a, a leader of men, you know, a father figure to most of the cricketers. He command respect, he give respect. He was a guy who really helped West Indies with that legacy of fast bowling. Put West Indies on the, the path to winning so many test matches with his leadership qualities. Tactical he was a very good captain know when to make the right bowling change the right moves field placement i always remember watching cricket live on tv and you see clive lloyd as a captain with four slips of gully you know which brought a smile to to my face and the viewer's face but he never really spoke much on the field you know in cricket you have some captains are very animated when something goes wrong put their hand up you know just overreacting you never saw that from from lie he just stayed there steady give a look or not or whatever he had great leadership Qualities. I remember back in New Zealand 1980s, which is a, a little bit controversial when um, New Zealand won West Indies in the two-match test series, which basically they really cheated West Indies. The umpires, Fred Goodall and the other umpires was basically cheating. That's the incident when Colin Croft uh, um, kicked on the stumps, um, hit Holland kicked on the stumps and then Croft hit the umpire, but running in and nudged the umpire while bowling. Clive Lloyd, the captain, called Clive Lloyd over and he listened to them. He didn't really say not much. He didn't say not much to his players. He just listened. It just made uh, meant how he handled that situation. What he did, he was really standing up for his players. You know, even if it was controversy because it was really blatant cheating by the New Zealanders. I will post some of those videos in the future. Clive Lloyd was a, a leader of man. Everybody respected him as, as, as a cricketer. He made good choices, good decisions. He was a man who integrated the Caribbean. Twist here is that I'm sure you guys must have thought that he would be your top number one pick as a lot of uh, West Indian cricket fans would put Clive Lloyd there, two World Cup wins, leading the team and and turning it into an unbreakable force and an unbeatable force, you know, in the 70s, 80s, emphasizing fast bowling, aggressive batting. His tenure, you know, was marked by the establishment of West Indies, leading cricket nation in the world cricket. What a guy to look up to, man. A towering presence that he brought to the team and the field was just simply amazing from what I've heard. I mean, I've seen some of his games, but I've heard from you, Mark, and other players that when he walked onto the field, the presence itself was just something with, with a guy like Clive Lloyd. That was our number two, guys. And before we get into our number one, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and check out our reverse scoop shop. And check out that Caribbean man cricket bat that Mark recently launched with his business. So I'll post all those links in the description and let us know what you've thought of this list so far. Let the viewers know what our pick number one is. Yeah, so my number one pick is Sir Frank Rory, originally from Barbados, also played for Jamaica in this domestic competition. He, he broke the color barrier, who was the first appointed captain for our entire series, first appointed black captain for our entire tech series for the West Indies. So that's really why I have him up as our number one. Tactically, he was a great leader, a leader of men. You know, he brought the Caribbean together. He was a man who first helped integrated the Windward Islands and the Leeward Islands into the Caribbean first class system as well. A pioneer of our cricket, Sir Frank Warrior, one of the greatest leaders in West Indies. Make sure to check out the top 10 batsmen rankings video right here on the screen. You're going to see it. Again, guys, thank you for watching. And until next time, we'll catch you guys later. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you. Take care.